Wow, that looks so difficult to fill a whole boat of salt. Hi, I'm Lavi and this is Oli. We are attempting a new Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by motorcycle. After riding 3,000 miles across Europe, we are now ready to explore the roads of North Africa. Click the subscribe button to follow our journey around the world and let the adventure begin. Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 88 on our around the world trip. <laughs> and we are here in an Airbnb in Dakar, the capital of Senegal. And we have been here for the last couple of days. Yesterday we went into town to go and get our passavant extended. So that's our temporary import permit for the country. At the border they just give you five days. And in the downtown of Dakar there's a small office on the fourth floor of a massive building, the AXA building in Place de Independence. And there we managed to get a 15 day extension and it was for free. So that was a good result. We also checked out the port to see if the shipping company is real and it is real we saw a face we talked to somebody and that made us really happy now we have a good feeling we will drop off um, bumblebee next week and everything should be fine for Brazil but that gives us some time to explore the local area so let me show you guys where we're heading today so here is our awesome new Senegal map that we got in st. Louis and we are just about here in the capital, Dakar. And today we are gonna be exploring some sites around the area of Dakar and finishing the day slightly down the coast around here. So we have about 60 miles today. It's already really, really hot. So better hit the road, let's go. Day 88 in the sweaty capital of Senegal. <laughs> it's only 28 degrees, but it's pretty humid and it feels already pretty hot. We're sweating buckets, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh, luckily that's a paved road. It's funny because all the side roads here in Dakar are unpaved. So it's always a little adventure going right and left. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of dirt roading each time you want to reach your accommodation. <laughs> yes, well it's a good practice I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're doing a little exploration around the region of Dakar and we've got a couple of points of interest in mind and the first of those is called the African Renaissance Monument and it's around 25 minutes away so let's go! <laughs> Stuck in the traffic of Dakar. This is an incredibly busy city. And every time we try to go anywhere around, it's just back to back cars. I think they need a few more motorcycles in this city. Because this is ridiculous. But it's really cool because along most of the highways in the city, They've actually got these beautiful gardens and um, all of these plants here are for sale and basically along all the highways they've, uh, they've got the people growing these plants to sell but it just makes for a beautiful attraction on the side of the road as well. Yeah, it looks very pretty, very colourful. Yeah, it's like a paradise. A lot, of, a lot of different plants as well. Yeah, it's super impressive, super impressive. And it's really resourceful that they've used those banks on the side of the highways to do that. Yeah. I think that's really cool. You can see some butterflies here. Yeah, yeah, the insects nice. can enjoy it. Nice. <laughs> Ah, there it is! 
It's a pretty big statue, isn't it? It's a pretty big monument. <laughs> so this monument is really special because it's the tallest monument here in Africa. It's about 50 meters tall. Let's just park over there in front. Okay. I'll and just let's just have a look. Yep. I'll just bump up on the curb here. Whoa! There <laughs> it is! <laughs> Very cool! Hey, look at that! Cool, let's go check it out! So, Lavi is gonna wait behind with the bike because she will definitely get a headache if she tries to climb this in this heat. So I'm going to go up alone to take a closer look at the monument. Oh my god, that's quite a lot of steps. Nice, look at this. That's pretty massive. as you walk around the monument you also get really nice panoramic views of the city have a look over there nice that's downtown Dakar behind us and you can see the other side of the peninsula so you got the ocean on that side you got the ocean all around here and then the ocean on that side that's pretty cool, hey? There we go, the African Renaissance Monument. A really cool and impressive monument but apparently quite a controversial monument as well due to the cost and other factors but it's cool to see it up close So we have left the African Renaissance Monument behind. Oh look, there's a baobab tree. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> and we are nearing our second point of interest for the day. And this is it. Lac Rose. <laughs> <laughs> now you can't see exactly from here just yet, but we're going to carry on down this road. But apparently this is a pink lake the name of the lake Lac Rose yeah exactly so it's supposed to be pink <laughs> let's see as we get a bit closer if it actually is pink it's pretty impressive though to have a big lake like that just yeah. here next to the capital yeah so we're making our way over to the center of the lake where we can stop and have a little look around
Get on one of these little pink boats with Babaka. <laughs> with Babaka <and> Nostre. <laughs> so we're gonna head on one of these boats now okay. and go and check out La Rose. Okay. Oh look, you can start to see the pink colour, hey? Oh yes. Wow, look here. You can start here already, yep. Oh yeah. Look at that at the edge. Yeah, because of the reflection in the water from the shore, you actually can't see that it's very pink. But when you get in the lake, then you can see it. Senegal! Senegal. Woo! Nice. Wow, look how much souls. Like this is salt. Yeah. It's not happening, look. We are just circling around. <laughs> just circling around. Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's the way. <laughs> so Babaka was saying that when there's when there's no sun, not a lot of sun, then there's it's not pink because the algae needs the sun, and then when there's a lot of sun, it becomes more and more pink as the algae has a big bloom. Yeah, at the moment it's like semi-pink, but you can still see there is pink in there. Do you think that the guys are quite all right here working in the water because it might be like refreshing and nice, but the water is actually warm. It's like, it's not a nice warm, it's almost too warm. Yeah. And he just told us that the guys, they need about five hours yeah, to yeah. fill one boat. It's 1,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. kilo of salt. Yeah, and they earn about 15 euro oh, a day. Whoa. Look at all the salt in there. Wow, that looks so difficult to fill a whole boat of salt. Deux fois. Deux fois, voilà. Deux fois par jour. No. Wow, I'm impressed by those guys, hey. Wow. Being, being yeah. able to do that, that's insane. That's a lot of work and a lot of salt in very hot water. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Wow. Merci, Babaka. Merci. <laughs> <laughs> so we had access to a supermarket and then we used the chance to get some olives, and we got some dates. We have actually some butter as well. So we will have butter bread with a boiled egg on top and for me some tomatoes as well. Nice. It's a little bit different to what we have normally, just, just bread and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> awesome lunch. Nice. Okay, we're now leaving Lac Rose. I thought that was really, really nice to actually go out on that little boat on the lake. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really cool and worth seeing, definitely. How much did that cost us for the boat ride? I think the boat ride was seven euro fifty. Yeah, five thousand CFA, seven euro fifty. But yeah, it gives you a much better perspective than what you can get from just on the shore. And it's really nice, you can get a bit up closer to the guys that are working out there and really see the whole scenario, which I thought was really nice. Very interesting. And like, just the whole experience, how warm the lake is and how much salt they're getting out there. It's just incredible. Yeah. I tasted the water and it was really, really, really salty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we are off to our third and final attraction for the day which is called the Village de Tortua 
So uh, we'll just drive over there and we'll tell you more about it when we get there. Well, there's a lot of activity going on in the town right now. The town market is in full swing on both sides of the road. Should we get a goat? Yeah, should we pick one up for dinner? Yeah. Beautiful. Which one do you like? Look at those guys. Hello. I like them all. Yeah, but only to set them free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now it looks like you can pretty much find everything you need. It's like, you need a fan? Yeah, there's a fan. You know, you need a goat? There's a goat. Pretty much just drive down this road, you'll find everything you need. Whoa. Nice. Look at all these guys. Wow. Whoa, look at this big one. Incredible. Whoa. Look at this black smoke. Way. Aha, we've arrived. There we go. Look at this. Nice. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Beautiful entry. All right, let's go and check it out. So the guy said that I could park the motorbike inside the gate there so that it's going to be safe. All the stuff's going to be safe. So, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it inside the village of the tortoises. Woo! Ah, merci. Ça c'est bien? Voilà? Here it is. The village de tortoises. The village of the tortoises. According to the sign, it's actually the last reserve in the Dakar region. It said it was opened in 1957 and it maintains the original flora, the original plants of this region. And it's the kind of the last place where this ecosystem is still actually able to exist. So it's a reserve for lots of plants and animals. And some of them apparently are very rare in Senegal. It's about 16 hectares, the whole forest. And there's loads of these baobabs. Apparently the place fell into disuse, fell into disrepair and was actually saved by the people, the village du Tortuez people. And those guys are apparently passionate conservationists and naturalists. So they actually saved this place. They put a fence around it. They made it back to what it's supposed to be. So let's go and check it out. And we should find a lot of tortoises here. Whoa, there's already some here. Look at these guys. Amazing. Apparently this one is Senegal's largest native tortoise. It's massive. Look at that. I didn't realize that they had like massive tortoises here. That's awesome. Look, a little lizard at the entrance. <laughs> wow, it's really tropical here, hey? We're not in the Sahara anymore. <laughs> no. Look, the little bobbies. Hello. Merci, merci. Merci. <laughs> merci. merci, merci. It's on the 
Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Très, très joli. Yeah. Well, goodbye, village de Tortues. <laughs> nice place. Very nice place. Very cool. Worth a visit. If you want to see some giant native tortoises. Exactly. The beautiful animals of Senegal. And who knew that they had giant tortoises here in Senegal? That's really cool. It is really cool. Yeah. And not a bad price entry as well. It was only three and a half thousand CFA each. So 7,000 for the two of us. And 7,000 is about... Uh, 10 euro. About 10 euro. So yeah. about five euro each. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I love to support conservation projects like this. I think it's really cool because I was reading that they actually have released 24 tortoises back into the wild in Senegal. So effectively they are operating as a breeding program and uh, working to conserve the species which is really really nice oh by the way the species is called the spurred tortoise i forgot to mention that before but that's the species that they have there yeah it's just really impressive at first the work they're doing there and also the uh, different types of trees and how uh, dense everything is and green if i just imagine like how this is the way how it would have looked actually it's just so lush and stunning so we've booked another accommodation on uh, booking.com and that accommodation is right by the ocean a little bit south of Dakar so it's about one hour for us to get down to there so uh, yeah, let's just make our way down there. Wait, 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 wait. Here. Here. To the right here. Yeah. All right. We've come off of the main road and now we're on the unpaved road and uh, this road is going to take us to our accommodation. Just straight down here, hey? Yeah. All right. 0 0.3 down here. Okay. Here are some nice houses. <laughs> Beverly Hills of Senegal. <laughs> yeah, we found this place on booking.com and it is uh, about 15 euro a night. You can't really find any cheaper places under like 15 euro here in um, Senegal, or at least we didn't find any. So in 250 feet we should arrive. Oh yeah, I can see the sign. Hotel Paradialo. Paradialo. Nice. Is that is that a sign for a PC? I see. Are we at the right place? I don't know, but I, I see. Hope a, we are. I see a <laughs> sign for a PC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, pull up here and we'll see how we get on. Okay, okay, let's check it out. Okay, we had a look on the map, and it is not the place. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to go just a little bit around the corner, so let's see if we can find our accommodation. Ready? Let's go. So normally to yeah to the to the right here. Right here, yeah. Yeah. Go. Our bash plate doing its job. <laughs> oh look, here's a convenience store. Okay. 
Should we maybe ask these guys? Hello. <laughs> Salam. Uh, Zion Lily Paradise. Tubab Diolo. No, no, this here. Okay. Is this road? Okay. My sister know every compound about uh, here. Ah. Back in Villa Roman. Okay. I know you died. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we just park here for a minute. Okay. Ah, Messi. This guy just here really helped us to find find our place. And we have located it. The uh, location on Airbnb was not correct but he knew where it was so now we're gonna head over there it's not far just around the corner but the road is not too good to get there so we're gonna see how we get on but maybe Lavi has to walk a little bit unfortunately mm. from here you should walk yes that looks a little bit too <laughs> Yeah, I might need a push, but at the moment it's okay. Let's see how I get on. <laughs> yeah, the road to this place, not too amazing as you can see. Okay, I can see the place, Lavi. I'm nearly there. Oh, got a bit of wheel spin. <laughs> Be careful, doggies. Here we are, this is the place. Just gonna turn around. It's not the easiest turnaround I've ever done, but okay. There we go. Oh. Okay, sinking in a little bit. Woo! I met, I met Oli, 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 and Lavi. Yes, I'm Shante. Good evening guys, we made it, happy and alive. <laughs> yeah, look, we've just dumped our stuff down everywhere in the room. <laughs> oh my God. Man, these bags are getting more heavy and heavy as it gets hotter and hotter. I don't know, like... Yeah, we get sweatier and sweatier mm -hmm. every day. Every day we're heading south. It's sweaty, it's sweaty, sweaty days. We have arrived here. Uh, the name of this area is called Tubab Dialao, and it's uh, just a little bit south from Dakar. But after riding around the city in all different directions and with the endless traffic pretty much the whole way, then we're really glad to have arrived. Yeah, definitely, because it's already 6.30. So it took us pretty much the whole day. <laughs> yeah, for the, our three points of interest. Yes. But they were really interesting from a sort of cultural man-made one to a natural one in the area. And then finally something with nature and conservation and uh, wildlife. Uh, it was a really nice mix uh, to the experiences of the day. It's nice to do a little bit sightseeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Proper tourist today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comments below. We will see you next time.